Hey there, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in because today I got a brand new interview with former UFC fighter, first and only New Japan Strong Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Filthy Tom Lawler. First of all, I got to say, man, awesome setup. I'm like kind of like spotting all the things that you have there uh, in your background. I love your setup, man. Well, I've got a lot of things that are probably off the... Um off the view as well like uh actually this is this is the last thing i got was a nobuhiko uh takata how figure which is highly sought after um that is so cool i don't have anything stone cold steve austin related uh or even like bret hart i do have some cane oh yeah being, nice, uh, nice, nice uh but one of the coolest things i think is the Milko Mania. Have you seen this? Oh my God, that is, oh my God, that is so cool. What's so this? Austin's in there, look at that. Ah, all you need is the, it comes with all the little accessories. Oh my God, the milk um, coming out of the little hose. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. I'd never seen that before. So I'm so glad you showed that to me. <laughs> what an iconic moment. Oh my God, that is so awesome. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and jump right into this, man. So this Sunday on the 20th, in just a couple of days, you're doing your eighth title defense for the Strong Championship at the New Japan, New Japan Strong tapings. Uh, Strong style devolved in Florida against Clark Connors. I kind of want to start things off by asking you, what has it been like to really be the focal point of New Japan Strong? Well, at first it was a little weird because there was no fans for almost like the first year or so of the show. And um, actually, like this show didn't exist before the pandemic, you know, um, a couple months into the shutdown, uh, I was contacted by New Japan, the offices and asked if I wanted to take part in a show called Lions Break. I think it was a uh, Lions Break Collision or something like something like that it was it was uh you know uh like a three or four um show series it was it was nothing nothing big and then you know i get asked to come back the next time and it's for new japan strong and you know there's a lot more guys there there's guys from the main roster there there's um you know kent is there john moxley's showing up on the show and there's no fans so it's it was wild uh it was bizarre because you show up, you wrestle, and then they try to get you out of there as quick as possible because, you know, of the pandemic. They don't want people, you know, interacting and mixing germs. So it was kind of like Fight Club. You show up, you fight in this empty arena. Uh, maybe you win, maybe you lose. You definitely get beat up in the New Japan ring, uh, and then you go home. So for, like, the first year, it was just – it was bizarre, but – you know, you mentioned earlier, former UFC fighter. Um, and unfortunately, I wasn't always at the top of the card. And a lot of the prelim fights in the UFC. Have you been in UFCs, Denise? I've only been to Bellator events. Okay. It's probably close to the same. But the early fights on those shows, there's not a lot of people there. Especially when I would fight in Vegas. The high rollers that have the tickets, they don't show up until like the co-main event. So I was used to fighting or wrestling with nobody around. Uh, and even when I wrestle, the fans don't really cheer for me anyway. So it doesn't really <laughs> matter. But now that the fans are back, it's it's awesome. You know, I get to uh, team up with J.R. Kratos, Danny Limelight, Jarrell Nelson, Royce Isaacs. And we've just been having a blast the whole time. And it helps when you're always winning. So uh, it's been it's been great. I think this has clearly been the best, uh, you know, my pro wrestling career has ever been. And I was going to say that because I, you know, I was at the New Japan Strong Rivals that you guys just did in Los Angeles. And like, I, you came out and, you know, obviously like this big match and you just coming out and you're having so much fun, you know, dancing and doing your thing in front of the crowd. It's a really nice uh, energy. And I really like the venue too, in which you guys did that show at. It was pretty cool to kind of get to experience the event at that kind of a level. But I do want to ask you in terms of like, when you first got brought in and you mentioned like, you know, they were doing like these like smaller versions of what they're 
were doing with New Japan Strong. And then they start New Japan Strong. What was your reaction to this, especially considering that they were bringing in different types of talents? Like you mentioned, there was the mixture of, you know, of, you know, the, the bigger name guys. But then there was also a lot of guys that were still unheard of, you know, a lot of locals. What was your reaction to that? Well, I mean, it was like a smorgasbord of guys, like you mentioned, right? Like there was, um, I'm trying to think of all the different people I've wrestled, but I've wrestled, you know, Hikaleo's coming over from the New Japan, like kind of like the main roster. Uh, then you have the dojo guys that are there and then like PJ Black's on the show, you know, then you get some like Dolph Ziggler's cousin, AJZ is showing <laughs> up. So there's just all these weird, you know, mixes of people and, um, you know, honestly, it's like, if you look at some of the pedigree that some of those guys had in professional wrestling up to that point, I don't know that you'd, you know, pinpoint me and go like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to, you know, strap to the rocket to this guy and give him the push and give him the belt. But, you know, this is new Japan, you know, this is a new Japan show. This, as much as it takes place in the U S they do really try to keep true to the spirit. Uh, and the strong style of New Japan. And when you look up and down um, the main roster of New Japan, there's not really anybody. There's there's Suzuki, obviously. He's a legend, uh, arguably one of the creators of what is like modern mixed martial arts in a way. Um, but he and I are like completely different characters. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I think the fact that I'm a legitimate fighter, obviously, and... I, I bust my ass. I mean, to be honest, I, I wrestle a really hard style uh, and I'm willing to take as much as I give out. And I think that's what new Japan's all about. And really like I, I'm lucky to have been given the opportunity, but you know, once I got that ball, I wasn't slowing down. I'm not the fastest guy, but I'm willing to run through whoever's in front of me. So. Exactly. And so, you know, we mentioned the fact that you not only are you the first, but you're the only New Japan Strong Champion. So for you, how important has it been to be given this task to to really establish the title as the first? Yeah, I take these title defenses and I mean, obviously, I take all this stuff very seriously to a certain degree, even though I'm having a blast, believe me. Um, but I try to make every match I'm out there in as good as it can be and try not to... Uh, I try to mix my style obviously and not compromise um, what I think professional wrestling should be with what the other guy is going to do, you know, and there, there's certain matches. Like, I don't know that people would have expected Tom Waller versus Fred Rosser uh, to be the rivalry that it's been, you know, you could go uh, Tom Waller, Chris Dickinson, those two are going to have a, a fight. You know what I mean? You could picture that match. Um, but there's been plenty of, of times where I've gone against guys who, you know, you wouldn't exactly be able to uh, figure out what's going to happen like Fred Ross or like a, like a Leo rush. You know, I don't get the opportunity to wrestle too many cruiserweights, even though I'm like 200 pounds. Uh, but wrestling a guy like Leo rush was awesome for me because it's a completely different style than I'm used to. I'm sure my style is different than what he's used to. And you get to kind of see like what you can develop together uh, and create, you know, so that's, that's the interesting part too, because not only do you mention like the fact that like, there's some matches that are on paper, you're like, oh yeah, this is going to be awesome. And then there's some matches that you're like, oh, like, okay, what are we going to get from this? Yeah. And then it kind of ends up, you know, panning itself out. Now, here's the other thing that I was, uh, you know, wanting to ask you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the last I've heard, you're not officially signed with New Japan. Uh, so with them making you champion, was that surprising to you? And again, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah. I mean, I have a, uh, I'm very happy with, uh, I, I have a, I have a deal with new Japan strong. Uh, so I'm very happy with where I am. You know what I mean? Um, if I end up over in Japan, that's cool. If not, then I'm more than happy being here in the USA. I'm not an idiot. Like I read the news. I understand what's going on overseas. You know, I mean, when there's an entire month where there's no flights going into the country, you know, there's, there's still wrestlers over here. I'm sure that wrestle for new Japan stronger who are asking when they're going over there. And it's like, guys, you have to, you have to pay attention to this stuff. Like this is your life. This is your career, you know? So I'm more than happy, um, you know, being in the USA and being the face of new Japan strong and, and being on the roster, but you know, I'd love to 
be over in Japan. I never got to fight over there. I haven't had a chance to compete over there. I've been there, but that's my goal, you know? And if it means I get to take the new Japan strong belt over there and defend it even better, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because I feel like, you know, being part of the new Japan strong brands, like within itself is awesome because you're, you know, exploring all of these new opportunities, obviously something that hasn't been done before. So you get to, you know, do that and marvel in that but at the same time it's like wanting to go over to japan and kind of like solidify your same your name as a new japan strong being associated with the shows in japan mm -hmm. so for you like if the opportunity does come about uh who are some of the guys that like you would be like excited to work with etc well like you know i'm pretty sure the you throw my goals out the window but i'm pretty sure the plan you know, from the New Japan Strong or from the New Japan main roster side is to get the guys from Strong over there. There's guys like Jay White hasn't been over there in well over a year, Juice Robinson, Finley. So there's guys who are New Japan Strong guys for the most part right now who, you know, were part of, of the past of New Japan two years ago on the main roster who are going to end up going back over there. Um, and there they will, I'm sure, be associated with New Japan. Whereas like I have the opportunity to go over there and people are going to go, this is a new Japan strong guy. You know what I mean? We now are going to have an Avenue to where it's not just like, ah, you know, I, I like to equate new Japan strong to NXT, you know, for the, for the new Japan audience. Um, and a lot of times guys just get stuck in NXT right now. And, and right now, you know, if you look at new Japan strong, we're stuck there, but it's a different situation. You know, I think once I go over there uh, and some of the other guys from new Japan strong go over there, you're going to see a lot more wrestlers in the U S on the independent scene who want to be part of the new Japan strong roster, not even, you know, uh, you know, looking to take that, that step to new Japan right away, but wanting to be on the show. That is, it's the best pro wrestling product. I, I consider WWE and AEW to a certain degree, like, uh, sports entertainment. AEW has a lot of wrestling, but it's a sports entertainment show. You know, New Japan Strong is a professional wrestling show. And I think you're going to see professional wrestlers take the same path that I'm going to take over there. And that's really cool to say, because I think right now with like so much competition, obviously you have to be different. And one of the things that I think appeals, uh, like when, when New Japan started getting popular here in like the USA and all of that, when they started coming in and doing all of their things here, kind of doing their like American takeover, I guess you can say, uh, I feel like the thing that attracted a lot of the newer fans was really just the fact that it was such a different product from what you were seeing from WWE, you know, from AEW at the time or and seeing them, you know, kind of bring something that is more of a sports-based product. Obviously, it's always been a sports-based product, but for the newer American fans, they were really just being introduced to it. Yeah, and there's, um, you know, there's room still for all these different flavors and varieties of wrestling, even if they're in, you know, the mainstream or semi-mainstream, right? Like, there, if you go on the, con the timeline continuum or whatever it would be, WWE is obviously at one end. And then you're going to have things like blood sport and, you know, some of the harder hitting new Japan matches at the other end. Um, and then most of the stuff is kind of in the middle, you know, I think AEW does an awesome job of uh, protecting the rankings and making their matches, you know, mean something, but uh, the style of wrestling is just a little bit different. You know, it's kind of like comparing like dragon gate to new Japan, you know, they're both, they're both awesome. Um, but one's a little bit more sport based or, or supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So now we've been talking about a little bit about the travel restrictions and, you know, not really being sure of like when, you know, the ball could get rolling with more, uh, travel to Japan and whatnot. So I do want to ask in terms of the G1, uh, do you think that new Japan of America should do like their own G1 here in the States? Kind of like what they did with the, uh, new Japan cup. I think last year would have been the year to do it uh, and it didn't happen. I don't know why it, logistically, I don't know if new Japan was hoping that, you know, things would improve. I think things back then things kind of were improving. And then we got hit with the Omicron surge uh, quickly after. So they never really had a chance, um, 
you know, to get all the other bearings straight as far as doing like a big G1 last year here or overseas. And I think with it being New Japan's 50th year, 50th anniversary, uh, I think the focus is on putting on big events over there in Japan. Um, I'm sure because April 16th, the Windy City Riot uh, is a New Japan pay-per-view event. Now, there, it's a little bit different. There's a difference between New Japan Strong Shows and New Japan Shows. So that is a New Japan pay-per-view. Uh, and I believe that there will probably be more of those that we see in the future. But I think that the goal, uh, I think that what New Japan should be trying to do is have the biggest G1 ever. 50 guys in the G1. You know, why not? It's the 50th anniversary. Go for it. Go all out, man. That would be really pretty awesome, too. So uh, let's go ahead and kind of talk a little bit, too, about, you know, we've been mentioning a lot of the different people that we've been seeing come in in New Japan Strong. One of the biggest topics in wrestling right now is really like that forbidden door. You've been hearing it nonstop. And even I feel guilty, like, asking people about it, uh, you know, during interviews. But uh, it is something to discuss because we've been seeing, you know, a lot of these relationships between companies and whatnot. So with that being said, is there anybody that you would like to see maybe maybe walk in through that new Japan, uh, you know, walk into new Japan strong and maybe somebody that we haven't seen there before. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I start thinking about the names uh, it's guys, a lot of times it's guys that have kind of been in and out already. Like, you know, Jonathan Gresham, he's been on new Japan strong. He's not always a regular, but he's awesome. Um, Josh Alexander, you know, very similar story, but if we're going to talk about wrestlers, then, you know, I think we need to talk about Brian Danielson, you know, yes. wouldn't it be awesome to see him in the new Japan ring? Obviously I'm sure people want to see him in the G one or see him in the Tokyo dome, but we got some pretty awesome shows going on over here as well. So uh, I think he would be at the top of the list. Obviously he's a, somebody I would love to face, um, you know, like John Moxley, another guy I would love to fight. He's out there, but he's he's been on New Japan strong. So that that forbidden door seems like it doesn't stop closing. Uh, <laughs> April 1st, right? Lone Star Shootout, US of J Open Challenge is going to be answered by Speedball Mike Bailey, which is another guy who is awesome. So there's just, there's too many guys out there now. And it seems like everybody's stepping through the door. Killer Cross is going to fight Suzuki, you know, it's just, what are your nonstop. thoughts on that? That was recently announced. How do you feel about, you know, seeing killer cross there, especially, you know, his, you know, his story coming off of WWE being released and just kind of everything that went down with him in NXT, then going to the main roster. And now, you know, this recent announcement that he, you know, challenged Minoru Suzuki. Yeah. Well, it kind of caught me off guard a little <laughs> bit, you know? Um, but if you're going to, if you're going to step in there against somebody, and shoot your shot. That's certainly, you know, the guy to do it against. And now, you know, killer cross has a couple of chances that weekend to control his narrative. So we'll see what comes out of it. Exactly. So now I also want to touch back and I'm, I'm going to rewind a little bit here because your career, I think has been interesting. We kind of mentioned a little bit about you, uh, this kind of being like the hottest your wrestling career has been, but prior to that, you know, you were doing MMA, but then prior to that, you were doing wrestling. So it's like wrestling, MMA back to wrestling. How do you feel like, I know this is such a broad question, but how do you feel kind of knowing that you went a different direction, a direction that ve not very many people go into you know you've seen you know ken shamrock you know he did something along the same lines but uh, we don't very we don't we don't see a lot of people go that direction the way that you have how do you think it's benefited your career and up until this point like how do you feel about all of the decision making that you have done to get you to the point where you are now well you know if i can answer that last question first i mean i'm not going to complain about where i am now but if I could make different decisions along the way, sure, I would have done it, you know, in <laughs> retrospect. Uh, I probably would have gone out drinking and partying so many nights that I did during the heyday. I mean, there was, I don't know, you probably weren't big into the scene during the time when Kimbo Slice was at his extreme hottest. Uh, but I was in the corner when Kimbo Slice, who was at the time a huge, huge star, got knocked out in 14 seconds by Seth Petrozelli. And uh, after that, it was like, 
we could go anywhere we wanted and get VIP service. So there was like a year or 18 months of my life where I was fighting uh, in the UFC and just blowing through money, you know, all my money, basically partying and drinking. So I would take a little bit of that back <laughs> if I could. Um, but yeah, I have taken the, the road less traveled, I guess you'd say. Um, my biggest inspiration, I've always watched wrestling since I was a kid. Um, and you know, I've always obviously, honestly, I should say I've watched MMA, uh, since UFC two was on pay-per-view when I was like 12. So I've been watching that almost since its inception in the U S and through the time period, I can, I can pinpoint and say my biggest inspirations were the pro wrestlers in pride. So these were sometimes guys like Takayama, Don Fry, Sakuraba, who would be going back and forth between pro wrestling and MMA. They weren't necessarily, um, you know, stuck in one world or the other. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a fighter in Pride FC in Japan. And I wanted to wrestle on in Hustle and Zero One and New Japan and All Japan and Noah and all these other companies. And um, when I was given the chance to make fighting my career, that wasn't, that wasn't an option. You know, pride was gone. Um, the UFC was the show to fight in. And I tried to continue to be a pro wrestler. Uh, even when I, when I was in the UFC uh, with my entrances and walkouts and stuff like that. But um, I guess I've always just viewed myself as both. And I feel like you get like the best of both worlds too. And I also feel like it adds more credibility to you and also in your work, obviously, you know, having the mixture of both of those worlds. But now, you know, you're sort of in a position where your wrestling career has now taken off, as we mentioned earlier today. So with that being said, like now that you've seen, you know, everything that you've done, you're here in New Japan strong. Maybe once the world opens up, we'll see you in New Japan and all of that. And, you know, where else, you know, wherever else the forbidden door will lead you in all of these places. So with that being said, with this year, within the next couple of years, how what do you see yourself? in terms of like short-term goals, long-term goals within uh, pro wrestling, as well as maybe even mixed in with any of your other outside projects? Well, this is something I think about a lot uh, as a pro wrestler. Uh, you know, you have a lot of free time. Uh, sometimes you're traveling and you got nobody to talk to. So you're stuck in your own mind. Um, in, I don't want to give this away too much, but I'll be 40 next year which sounds kind of old, but, you know, physically, uh, I felt worse, I guess, when I was doing MMA, um, I was more beat up. So, uh, this is being a little bit easier on my body right now. And when I look at guys like Minoru Suzuki, Yuji Nagata, uh, some of the guys who are still on the new Japan roster, Satoshi Kojima, these are guys who are in their fifties and Suzuki is a huge star over here. He just had a, you know, an awesome match with Hiromu Takahashi. And, you know, you wouldn't know that this is a guy who's in his 50s. So when I look at that, uh, I don't think I've even come close to overstaying my welcome in the pro wrestling world because I've only been here a few years. So it's not like I, I feel like I'm, you know, long in the tooth for this world. So uh, my long-term goal is to be wrestling when I'm 55. Um, you know, still traveling the world doing that. But in the short term, it's to take that New Japan strong open white title over to Japan. And in the shorter term, it's to kick Clark Connor's ass on Sunday at Strong Style Evolved. Um, because this is a guy, if we could talk about Clark for a second. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, I've watched Clark. Oh, look at this. What a setup, huh? Hold on. Look at this. I'll bring this up. Oh, that is awesome. Chris, oh, that Chris is awesome. Wrestling. Now, this is uh this is actually the first time that I traveled. I was flown in for pro wrestling events. So this was a few years ago, right? You know who was on the pre-show? Who? Clark Connors. No. First match ever. His first match. No. By Lance Storm. And I remember seeing Clark. I remember talking to him. I like Clark right off the bat. Clark 
was one of these guys who I'd show up at the show. He'd be doing 500 squats by himself. You know, some of the guys are out in the back ripping camels and Clark's over there doing his 500 squats. So I liked him right off the bat. And a few years later, I see that he's now in the new Japan dojo and he has gotten so good over these years. But the problem is that so have I, you know what I mean? And if you look at this, I was in the co-main event of this show and I've improved just as much, if not more than Clark has over that time. And he was on the pre-show. So he hasn't made up that gap in that time. There's going to be a day. We talked about my long-term goals. You know what my long-term goal would be? For Clark Connors to beat me for that title when I am 55. That's my long-term goal. Because there's going to be a day that comes when I can't keep up with the younger guys. Where I can't keep up with the young Lions. I can't keep up with the Clark Connors, the Carl Fredericks, the DKCs, the Alex Coglins, the, the Kevin Knights the Ren Naritas, the Yuya Umers. There's going to be a day where I can't keep up with them, but that day it's not now. And it's not going to be in the next few years. So they've got a long, long road ahead of them if they think that they're going to be the standard bearers of what Americans are in New Japan. You talked about taking the, low, the road less traveled, right? Yeah, I went about as long of a way as you can around. I didn't go through the dojo system. I'm not going to get, you know... Uh, hand-fed opportunities because the crowd has watched me come up through the ranks. No, uh-uh. I walked that road so that I can do exactly what I'm doing now. And that's kicking everyone's ass in the prime of my career. So Clark Connors on Sunday, get ready because I know Shabbat is out of the country. Okay. I know TJP is no longer your mentor. So you're probably looking for somebody who can teach you a few lessons, buddy. And I'm the man to do it. I love it, man. It's so crazy kind of seeing things like come like full circle and even more so like it's pretty crazy to see how he went from, you know, being on the pre-show card and you being the co-main event. Now you guys are going at it together. That's really awesome. So, Tom, I first of all want to thank you so much for doing this interview with me. I feel like I can talk to you forever, really. Uh, before we go, please feel free to like plug in anything you want to plug in. Uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Just check out my Twitter at Filthy Tom Lawler. Check out my Instagram at Filthy Tom Lawler. Anything I do or say, I guess, can be held against me. Please don't do it. But check out and see where I'm going to be. Hey, New Japan Strong, I'm there on every show they do. But the weekends I'm not there, and even some of the weekends that I am, I'm also flying across the country. So I'm going to be in Louisville this Friday. I'm going to be in Chicago next week. Dallas the week after for a few days. So I may be in your backyard, and if you want to see what I think is the best UFC fighter turned pro wrestler, check it out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tom. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.